Hello plant friends. So we are continuing Darylin's tour. Now we're going into her bedroom, low light bedroom, lots of funky plants. If you're enjoying the tours, uh, consider becoming a Patreon and thank you for all my Patreons uh, for supporting. <laughs> Let's go. Okay. So this is the cleanest this room's ever been. <laughs> so savor it. This is probably never gonna look like this again. <laughs> So yeah, this is, this is kind of, I guess you guys could probably tell which side of the bed's mine. Oh, I see. Yeah, that, that side. Okay. <laughs> so this is, do you want to guess what that is? Uh, it's a varicosum, is it El Choco? No, this is Philodendron Luxurians. A ju this is hmm. a juvenile Philodendron Luxurians. Hmm. Yeah, gives me, I always, I mean, I, it's hard for me to hate, hate any of these types of plants that are right? velvety, round, veiny. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. This is one of my absolute favorites. There's actually a more mature one behind you, mm -hmm. but this is one of my absolute favorite plants. And the way that you tell the difference between the Choco Red and the El Choco Luxurians, because they're actually both called Chacos. Oh, okay. Because they're from the same region in South America. But the luxurians is a crawler, so you can oh. see this one. Oh yeah, has been crawling. Yeah, and it doesn't have the red color. It's more of like a blushed pink. Hmm. So if you're looking for a philodendron luxurians and you're not sure if it's really a luxurians or if it's an El Chaco red, because in the juvenile form they do look really similar, that's how you tell. Is yeah. the this... it's a crawler. Yeah, I'm like this looks very very similar. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, whew. I like it. I love it. <laughs> and these plants get such a bad rap for being difficult, but I mean, this plant just will not stop growing. Oh, it's funny. It really, they love just like, they want to be in a dry, bright spot and they just want, but they don't want to dry out, but they want their leaves to be dry. Okay. Let's go. Let's go from top to bottom, I suppose. So this is, this shelf is just mostly my personal plants. Um, this is a fun one. This is an Anthurium gracile, and I feel like it gives me Patriciae vibes. Yeah, I mean, I, I I like it a lot. That that actually caught like my eye quite a bit. Yeah, I don't except, really see it that often. Yeah, you don't, and it's also like thirty dollars or something as opposed to Patriciae. You know, you get like high triple digits. Yeah, and there's like yeah, there's like ripples. Yeah, texture. this texture is really pretty. Is Anthurium gracile gonna have a moment after this? Oh, I hope so. This thing is insane. Yeah, it's awesome, right? It's so awesome. It's so accessible. Like, I feel like that's a plant. I think I wanna, I'm gonna put up a video at some point that's like plants you can enjoy for the same reasons that people buy, like, quote unquote, rare ones. And I mean, that's like a perfect example of like the texture on the leaf. It's. Yeah, I'm like, I'm trying to, hopefully, I can like capture it right on camera but oof, yeah it's you can super it down super if you, if you want super to. super nice this is my little billy Etier that mm. i got from my friend and i have you know like a gloriosum up here that i'm experimenting with getting it ready to go into leca and then this is a cutting off of this plant and we're going to see how it does i've had a lot of success propagating el chaco red uh -huh. so this was kind of like my <laughs> my my his Am I about to like mess this up? But it's a very small cutting. Like I feel like this is a risk, but we're gonna uh, see. Yeah, yeah. I think you got this. You we're got gonna this. see how it goes. Um, just, just some little anthurium. Oh, this is my little baby. What's this one? A warwalk? No. This is yeah. It's a it's a, it's a baby queen, queen anthurium. Mm -hmm. I grew this from a stem propagation myself. So it's rewarding, right? When you get those stems to stay alive. It's really not that hard. <laughs> I've had really, I have a few more down here, actually. I'll show you in a minute. Um, what's, what's this one? This? Yeah. This is Anthurium villeneorum or villanorum. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I really like it. It is not super happy in the pond. I don't think though. Most of the Anthurium I have, they love pond. This plant had its day in the sun for sure, and I feel like now it's 
it's fallen off a little bit, but it's such a great Anthurium, and I think it's still relatively affordable. It's very affordable, and it's also really impressive when it matures, mm -hmm. if you can get it to mature. This one is just not really sure what it wants from me, but we're working <laughs> on it. I I don't think that that's one that I would probably like try and rehab in salad mass, yeah. but these are... I think the most interesting plant on the shelf is probably this. This is Philodendron Majestic. Mm -hmm. And putting so, it in Laca was probably not the best choice. So this is a Soderoy something hybrid, right? Yeah, this is a cross between a Soderoy and a Varicosum. Mm. And this plant is actually, I would say, one of the plants that the market on it is still going up. Yeah, this one's super impressive. I think it's that's that it's going up because a lot of people just don't have it yet. It's it is still I would say a rare plant. Yeah. And they're really hard to come by and when you do find them, they cost a pretty penny. <laughs> I kind of got this one back before they really were on the the radar. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I was I like right before <laughs> the market on them shot up like yeah, but it was growing for me a lot better in soil, and then I don't know why putting it in LECA was what I decided to do, but I actually have two baby ones down there that I'm not going to put into LECA. I'm going to put them in soil. Um, but, oh, here's your orchid. Oh, that's an, oh, yeah, that looks really nice. Yeah, this is a really cool orchid. It gives me um, Hoya vibes. Whatever. Yeah, or like prehistoric vibes. Yeah. I really like plants that have kind of the prehistoric look like even the undersides of the leaves have like the pretty speckling. Oh, yeah, it's, it's speckled too yeah yeah hmm. orchids are really not as difficult as most people think that they are they mm. really just want consistency so you know mm. if you have a home environment where things stay pretty consistent orchids should be very very doable for you I mean, this shelf is kind of just my, like, personal stuff. I really like this variegated Monstera. It is Monday, so little Monstera <laughs> Monday. This is the Stamliana? Yeah, and this plant, I have a bunch of pieces of this plant in mm -hmm. the grow tent, yeah. but this was one of my variegation experiments because it was doing the thing where it was, like, one leaf that had basically none and then another leaf that has a blaze and it's really pretty and I wanted, like... Mm -hmm. something more solid from it but it's just still still doing the same thing so it's kind of an experiment fail i guess but that's all part of the journey you have a very nice uh pink princess right there yeah so this was actually a trade oh. that i got from a friend of mine and this oh look at this one i'm like wow yeah. this one looks super nice yeah she said that her plants kind of will do the thing where they give you like really nice variegation <laughs> and then last and then like no. <laughs> it's a pattern yeah. so hopefully we'll get some more like this soon where do you think where's or where's the trend the price and popularity trends for the pink pr princess heading down uh -huh. down down the thing about pink princess is that the entry level like getting your foot in the door on one is lower than it's ever been except for probably before people knew about them when you could get them for six dollars but for a nice one or like a big one mm -hmm. it's you're still gonna pay a lot mm. there's never probably been a better time to buy pink princesses i see them in groups all the time for mm. under a hundred dollars for like a one leaf cutting oh. so if you're looking for one i was so surprised that I, well, let me, let me say, back then I was surprised when the Pink Princess was one of the plants that like blew up in popularity during the pandemic. Yeah. But now looking back, I understand because at that time, lots of people just didn't have Pink Princesses. And also, if you're going to have a pink plant, it's very, it's hard to replicate or duplicate or replace a Pink Princess, right? Like, like what, what plant can substitute for a Pink Princess? I really don't. I really don't know. I think the sun stressed strawberry shakes. <laughs> and I think there's some syngonium that that really are But strawberry shakes are more expensive than pink princesses, I think. Oh, they're a lot more okay. expensive. Right. Yeah. yeah. Strawberry shakes are kind of having their moment right now, yeah. but we'll talk about that more in a second. <laughs> um so these are my little 
in Ethereum science experiments. Oh, okay. Um, so you have them. This is the the chunky uh, perlite, right? Yeah. It's like the what level three or level something like that. Yeah, you want to use the chunkiest perlite that you can find. Oh. Yeah. And you want to rinse it, for so you, sure. So you kind of have these little chunks like nested in the perlite. Yeah. yeah. You want to not nest them into the perlite until you have leaves because the perlite is at the base of the plant to encourage them to root. Mm. So something that I think maybe not everyone's aware of if they're not you know, experienced with regrowing anthurium stem propagations is that for the most part, like the roots on the nodes, if they're rotted or dead, they're not coming back. The new roots are going to come from the base of the leaves, from the new nodes. Mm. So that's kind of how. So that's really good to know. Yeah. And you kind of basically just cover it with a... I just cover it with cling wrap <laughs> because I'm not that scientific really. But hey. you could absolutely get a vessel that has a lid. It's just you have to make sure that you're taking it off and letting air flow in and that you're not letting condensation build up on the top to the mm. point where it's just dripping down. So, um, so for that... Uh, uh, how often are you taking the plastic wrap out to, I guess, uh, recirculate the air? Um, I usually will take it off mm -hmm. and then like flip it over so that the condensation doesn't drip like in the morning and then when I go to bed. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so pretty pretty regularly. Yeah. yeah twice a day. Yeah. yeah, definitely. I'm sure that there's better, <laughs> better setups that you could do to get the same result where you know, the condensation doesn't mm -hmm. ra rain down, but that's just kind of what I've been using because it's worked for me. So what's the fear of the condensation raining down on the leaves? Um, it's just if you get oversaturation on the leaves, you probably are gonna have them start to rot. Right, I agree, yep. So that's what you wanna just ensure. I think that something that people don't think about as much all the time is how important airflow is yeah. and I think one of the reasons that the plants in this room do so well is because I have that big ceiling fan mm -hmm. so sorry. yeah I think it, it circulates like the the humidity that's coming out of the moss yeah it's uh yeah I mean I don't really have to do much for humidity <laughs> in here I mean it's 61 in here and it's doing nothing yeah hey 61's good 61's really good yeah. So these 